I know we always like to we like to talk a few get a few truths about the watch industry from you we were very excited to see that everything that's come watch and watches and wonders I think since then or maybe over the last 12 months pricing on a lot of watches seems to have gone very high and I'm, i don't just mean the ingenieur for example that was the first thing that people commented on was the price of it but also even towards the lower end i was just seeing that timex re-released the first ever watch that i owned which was the timex iron man and i'm sure oh, wow. they were very affordable but they're a hundred dollars now for what is essentially the, a plastic iron man watch i know a lot of people joke that the big release from watches and wonders was that everybody's prices went up a lot do you think that's going to harm the the, the watching industry at all? It's a very, uh, very interesting and erudite observation. Uh, I mean, yes, there have been um, upward pressures on costs. Um, there's no question about that. I mean, you know, um, everybody has uh, has had, in had increases in uh, material costs and manufacturing costs, etc. But I, I, the level of price pricing that's in some places is going on, I, I think is nothing to do with that. I was having a very interesting conversation with uh, Jörg Bader Senior, uh, who runs our Swiss operation, about this very thing. And we were talking about it in relation to the, um, the Belcanto production. His view, and he's steeped in, he's had 40 plus years in the watch industry. I mean, and it, you know, it took us a while, a decade or so ago, to convince him that, uh, you know, um, it, things could be done slightly differently to to the way um, the watch industry does stuff. He's very much of the view that the watch industry, it, it, things are very good at the moment. Uh, you know, mechanical watches, uh, despite all the predictions of the demise of the category five, six, seven years ago when um, Apple brought out the Apple Watch, the opposite has, has happened. You know, it's been boom time for the mechanical watch industry, which is great. But sometimes that leads to um, a certain um, laziness, a certain expectancy. And so, for instance, if we take the bell canter, to get the pricing that we have on the bell canter, and, and not just a case of multiplying anything by three, which is our business model, but we genuinely always look to uh, keep our prices and our costs as low as possible. So we've sourced, in some cases, some relatively smaller manufacturers, not as fashionable as some others. Um, but hugely talented, hungry. And in one of them, for instance, you know, um, where we where we're getting um um some of the uh, some of the components polished for Belcanto and indeed where uh, where the platines are being manufactured. You know, ooh, there's um there's a Breguet component going through and there's a um, Vacheron component going through and there's a and you go, you know what? I don't think they A, I don't think they have any idea who's manufacturing necessarily, the brand doesn't, because what happens is they will give it to a uh, a big company who will then source it to someone else who may well then source it to the people who are finally making them. Yeah. And so they, they've got all of these additional margins in there that often they don't know about. But also I think they, you can become complacent and that if people are prepared to, it's almost an inverted snobbery. If, if the component costs as much as this, then it must be fantastic. The fact is, it shouldn't and didn't cost as much as you're paying to produce it. It's just that there are layers and layers of people producing this. Now, that's not in all components and not necessarily in all manufacturers. But believe me, as I walk around factories in Switzerland, you see components made for brands that are, you know, what? And we know the cost. And then we look at the cost of our watches versus the cost of their watch. And we go, well, they're made by the same people on the same machines using the same materials to the same high standards. So how is it there? And it's all about, I don't think they care as much. It's not as important to them. And there's this inverted snobbery about, well, if it's expensive to produce, it must be, therefore fantastic luxury item well we've always taken the opposite view of that and i whilst at one level uh, people are there's much more information about watchmaking out there than there ever was thanks to people like yourself and the internet generally actually the amount of the amount of um opaqueness um and, and you know disinformation and in some cases, outright lies that are told, 
is is I see no no decline in that. In fact, I think it's getting worse. Um, so and and people just don't know. Um, and it's it, it's it's but I think it's about the mindset. It's about and it, it, the most important thing is, you know, why should it cost as much as that? And then you've got the the second thing at play, which is, and I think um, this is true probably of one of the watches you re, you mentioned just earlier. I think they just position themselves in the marketplace, and integrated watches generally are very expensive. Yeah, and so if you're a brand such as IWC, yeah, you will have a view about where you position where you should be positioned in the marketplace. And if somebody is selling something that you think is equivalent to what you're selling at 10,000, but you th- perceive yourself and the customer may perceive your brand to be slightly better, then even though it doesn't cost you any more, you'll take a bigger margin. You'll put the price in that middle. So I think there's this price positioning thing going on, which has bears no, no doesn't necessarily bear any resemblance to the cost price. And that's, I think, um, a dangerous game to play ultimately. Yeah. But but ultimately, people and it's you know it's fascinating. You're you're already asking these questions, and you're not alone. You know, so you cannot get away with this sort of stuff forever. You know, people smart. People are smart, um, and and you know there is a sense, isn't there, that 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 you know, for want of a better expression, some people are beginning to take the piss. Some of us are pretty good at sniffing that sort of stuff out, and um, you're pretty good at it. And there's lots of others in in who know watches are pretty good at it. You know, I think I think there's hopefully the industry will go. Okay, <laughs> we're caught now with our trousers down a bit. Let's get a bit more sensible, and there'll be a bit of a return to, um, you know, more uh, more reasonable um, pricing. But I do think you're right. I think it's it's slightly out of control at the moment. We talk about it a lot on the channel that price has almost become like a specification or a feature of the watch yeah. instead of yeah. a reflection of. Um... Yeah. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews.